Hello, today we are going to be making this paint application in Godot. You can draw, you can even change your color, but that's not all. It's actually online paint, so everything you draw gets drawn for every connected user. Just like that. You can have as many connected users as you want. So it's using WebSockets for connection. I'm actually using a library called Socket.io. This is JavaScript server code, not even 30 lines. And I run the server through Node.js like this. Our Godot code is also very short, roughly 50 lines of code. So right now I'm going to delete everything, including server code, and we will start from the beginning together. So right now I have new empty project in Godot. I'm using Godot 4.2. The only thing that I changed is that I enabled emulating touch from mouse because I want to detect dragging. Let's add dragging detection like this and we can print our current mouse position. Let's try it and now when we press and drag our position gets printed here. To actually draw I will be using a node called Line2D which basically allows us to make lines. To make a line like this, we need to know at least two points. We already know our current mouse position, but how do we get our previous mouse position? Firstly, let's add our current mouse position to a new variable called end, and we can get our starting position by subtracting relative position from our current position, just like this. Let's try setting these two points of our test line to our new variables. So I'm setting first point to start and second point to end. It works, so that's great, but it's just one line, so we can't actually draw anything. We need to be constantly adding new lines. So let's make a function for adding new lines. We want to pass our positions to this function. So inside this function, let's create a new line to the node. Let's add two points to it with our starting and ending positions. Let's set color of our line to black for now. I'm using hex code for defining color. And finally, let's add our new line. Now, all we have to do is call this function. And yeah, it works. But we should also change begin cap mode and end cap mode to round, like this. We can do that in code like this. Okay, that's great. Now, let's add color selection. I'll add new empty node 2D and let's add horizontal slider as its child. Set max value to 255. That's because RGB colors have a range of 0 to 255. Let's make it slightly wider. And let's connect new signal to this slider when value changes. We can call this function color changed. Duplicate two more sliders, move them a little bit and rename them to RGB as red, green, blue. Let's also add color rec node that will be changing color to our currently selected color. We can enable unique names for our sliders to easily access them in code. Now make a new variable to store our current color. Now adjust our addLine function. And now let's work on actually changing our current color. We can get new color by getting values of our sliders and dividing them by 255. That way we get number from 0 to 1. Now let's set colorect's color to our new color like this. Oh, I put dollar symbol here by mistake. And let's try it. Right, so we can change our color now, that's great but we are still drawing black lines. That's because we didn't change our current color variable. We can get hex code of this color by calling toHTML function. Now it works. Awesome, so that's done and now we want to make it online. To do that, every time we draw a new line, we want to send that information to server and server will then send that information to every connected client. As I said at the beginning, to run the server, I'm using Node.js. All you have to do is install Node.js, copy path to your server folder, open this folder in command line. First time you will need to call npm install to install required modules. 
and then type node server.js to run the server. You can turn off the server by pressing Ctrl C. Ok, so let's start by connecting our Godot application to WebSocket server. If you type WebSocket peer and Ctrl click it, you will open up documentation and we can basically copy everything up to here. Paste it in, fix tab spacing. Now we want to connect our socket to this URL. WS stands for WebSocket. 2000 is port that our server uses. I also defined it here in our server code. You can change this to any port you like. And yeah, this should connect us correctly. Then inside process function that is running every frame, we are constantly pulling for new data. This is how we get state of our connection. State open basically means that the connection is ready to use. So if we are connected and while we have new data or packets available, do something with them. We will get back to this in a moment. First, let's try printing something on our server when new client connects. So I will print hello. Run the server, run the app and we get hello. So now when we add new line, let's also send information about this to server like this. 42 is code that socket IO uses to differentiate between different packets and it basically means something like message event. Drawing is name of our signal that we are sending and right here in this dictionary we have all of the data that we are sending. X, Y is our starting position and X2, Y2 is our ending position. And we are also sending our current color. For the positions, don't forget to convert numbers into strings. Now let's add detecting of this drawing signal into our server as well, like this. And we can actually print this data. One small fix here, we want to store current color as string. Ok, so now when we draw something, we get information about it right here on our server. Now all we have to do is send this data back to every connected client. So to do that, our server has to remember every currently connected user. We'll store these users in new array called sockets for example. We need to assign ID to every new connection. MathRandom basically generates us new random number. Then I'll store this connection inside our array using this ID. And when that user disconnects, we want to delete him from this array. So now when receiving drawing data, we want to loop through every currently connected user, get that user and send him all of this data back. So this is how we get packet data. But we want to convert these bytes into string. We can call getString from utf8 function to do that. Now we get actual data. So now we want to get only first two symbols from our string and only if it equals to 42 we want to print the packet. We need to do that because sometimes you get packets with different codes like right here we got 0 or 40. And then let's actually completely delete these codes from our strings by deleting first two symbols. So now we only get the data that we want without any codes. But right now these messages are still in string format. We want to convert them into JSON by calling parse string function. Now we can print name of the signal like this and we can print data like this. So we got signal drawing and data here. All we have to do now is check if the signal is drawing, get starting position, ending position and color from data and add new line. Don't forget to delete this testing line. There's one more change that we want to make in our server code. We want to send data back only if the ID is not equal to our own ID. Because we obviously don't want to draw the same line twice. And that's how you make simple online paint. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want more videos like this. Ok, bye!